right. Hello, welcome to our live talk series. This is the second talk in a series of four from the School of Health Sciences at IMU. Last week, we have Prof. Anthony Rhodes talk to us from the perspective of a biomedical scientist. And today we have Dr. Lim Sui Gyo, who is the head of nursing. She will talk to us about the importance of nursing care during a pandemic. Um, so tomorrow will be the third talk and it will be given by Professor Winnie Chi, who is the Dean of Health Sciences. She will talk about, do we need dietitians and nutritionists as part of the COVID-19 response? And next week, I will round up the health sciences talk on Monday with uh, the, reliance of the reliance on biomedical uh, medical biotechnology during a pandemic. Sorry, I gotta take a sip of water. <coughs> All right, um, next slide, please, thank you. And um, so as I've introduced Dr. Lim, but before we go on, there are a few housekeeping rules. So all the participants, we have muted the microphone and for questions and feedback, we will open up the chat box at the end of Dr. Lim's talk. Okay, so Dr. Lim, please take it away. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to start off with, I will talk about my nursing journey. My nursing training is actually started in Penang, where I got my certificate in nursing. And I worked in Penang for a few years uh, before deciding to move on to Kuala Lumpur and work in one of the private hospitals in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, I did my uh, uh, critical care uh, nursing in Kuala Lumpur and uh, while doing my critical care nursing there and worked for a few years in the area of critical care, I found that I actually uh, would like to be more focused and specialized in my critical care in the uh, neonates, for the neonates, which is those who are 28 years of life and I am uh, really interested in taking care of these babies. So uh, with that, I actually uh, worked in uh, this private hospital and then I moved on actually to another private hospital and I did my post basic in the General Hospital of Kuala Lumpur and obtained my neonatal uh, nursing specialization. As I was working in the neonate and also critical care, in this uh, private hospital, I decided that it's time for me to pursue my uh, studies and degree in nursing. And with that, I started off my journey to pursue my undergrad uh, qualification and uh, obtained my degree in nursing from UCL of South Australia in 2001. With this degree in line, I was uh, then thought of uh, in, uh, other than pursuing my uh, work in the area of critical care, I was actually um, thinking about uh, doing my teaching and so that I can actually disseminate my knowledge uh, and experience to other nurses. And therefore, I took my teaching methodology also under the University of South Australia and obtained my uh, teaching methodology. And uh, from there on, I actually uh, moved on to become the nurse educator. Uh, with this qualification and I did that for about a year or two before I went uh, to do my uh, teaching full-time in the nursing college in this hospital and from there on I was uh, started my teaching uh, fully in the, this college and uh, decided also to pursue my uh, master's in education and I did manage to complete my uh, master's in education while also working and uh, completed it and obtained my degree in the University of Malaya under, uh, at the year 2007. And uh, with that, I then pursued and moved on in my career and also my experience in teaching and become the program director for uh, another private college. And uh, with that, I also uh, worked there for a few years 
before I decided to uh, move on and join National Medical University. I did uh, my lecturing here in the university and uh, moved on to become the program director and uh, worked here up to now, which is my 11th year in International Medical University. And now I'm the head of the nursing division. Okay, so that is my uh, journey as a nurse. Yeah. Okay, so I move on now to as to why did I choose a career in nursing? Well, there are actually a few uh, things that come in my life. And uh, after I finished my uh, SPM and also my STPM, I actually found that I'm very interested to join the healthcare profession. And in healthcare, uh, nursing is one of the areas that I find particular interest because my aunt is also a nurse. And so I find that uh, that is this area which I find that I should uh, dwell in and also um, do my training in and find my niche here. And uh, the other reason is also is that I find that it brings me great comfort uh, to take care of those who are in need, especially uh, patients, those who are uh, elderly and sickly. I find that uh, this gives me a lot of satisfaction. So I find that nursing is uh, very suitable for me. And uh, besides that, being a nurse does not only limit myself to the hospital settings. It also provides me a lot of opportunity to work in other areas uh, as well as specialities in nursing, which I later found that Yes, this is very true. Huh? And uh, there are a lot of areas in nursing. Like for me, I did my uh, critical care and move on to further specialize in neonatal. And I find that I've done the correct choice. And the other thing is that uh, for nursing, I find that I can actually move from uh, in Malaysia locally as well as I can actually move on to abroad, overseas, with this qualification. So I find that it's a very good uh, profession. Other than that, also, as I mentioned just now, um, taking care of patients give me a lot of satisfaction, not only in securing a job, but also gives me um, internal satisfaction where I find uh, looking at patients, covering from very sick and uh, able to walk back out from the hospital gives me a lot of satisfaction. And I think um, it's not the money that uh, you gain from the job, but it's actually the satisfaction of uh, having this experience. And uh, more so for me, uh, working in the intensive care, I've experienced a lot of this sort of experience which really um, gives me a lot of uh, good memories. And I always share this with my students and I hope that they will also experience this. And true enough, I have students which I met during alumni gatherings which actually gave me the feedback that what I've shared with them is really what we are experiencing now. And they themselves also told me that they have no regrets in joining nursing. So I hope that uh, nursing can be a good uh, career for others as well. Other than the, this, uh, nursing is a very secure job and there is uh, a lot of job opportunities. Uh, you'll be surprised that people say that they can't find a job, but I don't think that is true. There is a lot of opportunity for nursing, not only in the hospital settings, but as well as other settings where nursing is required. As I mentioned just now, there's a flexibility of practicing in clinical settings, if you don't like hospital, or if you want to move on to share your knowledge, we can also teach 
in the hospital in the uh, hospital uh, we can also move on to the nursing college or even to uh, universities and not forgetting research as well and there are also industries which also require the nursing background uh, and uh, this can be in uh, 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 medical uh, industries which requires us as well as uh, for insurance and there's plenty a lot a lot more and uh, I hope that this actually uh, gives others a better perspective of what nursing can offer okay so I think that's uh, for my uh, reasons for me to join a career in nursing so I will then uh, move on now to nursing and the COVID-19 okay I think for nursing I think as most of us know nursing is the background of healthcare and therefore nursing is definitely a part of the frontliners in the fight against COVID-19 as you can see in the news and also in the newspaper uh, nurses are the frontliners and uh, they are rising up to the challenge yeah to fight against this pandemic and uh, they have played a major role in contributing their services uh, in this fight and i think the motivation is mainly to one patient to recover and to discharge home as soon as possible and with that i would actually like to uh, explain and also highlight the four main focus of, of our nursing practice when we do our nursing practice there are four main focus which is to promote health secondly to prevent illness thirdly to restore health and lastly to protect from work hazards and i think all this focus is very true if you can see what is happening now in the fight against COVID-19. Nurses are playing a role in all these four focus and we can see that very clearly when we read the news. Nurses are playing their role and also I think in order to play this role, yeah, I think nurses are updating themselves with the knowledge and the skills and that is why you can see a lot of nurses are upgrading themselves to degree holders, masters, and as well as PhD. I think that is important, especially when this pandemic coming in. It's very important for nurses to be very strong in their knowledge and knowing what they are doing and why they are doing, and also be able to think critically and be able to assess patients and know what is right what is normal and what is not normal so i think it's very important that knowledge and skills is being acquired by all nurses another is coordinating of activities with other healthcare personnel nurses cannot work in silo as you can see now during the pandemic all healthcare personnel have to work together as a team and nurses have to be a team player they have to be able to contribute and i can see that there is a lot of roles that nurses are playing which can include being a good communicator as you can see now patients there are a lot of patients in hospitals now and some are positive some are not positive but they are admitted to the hospital so nurses are now looking after those who are in the isolation and those who are in the critical area or those who are just being under monitoring so it's very important that nurses play a part 
in ensuring that these patients are not anxious and know what is being done for them and be able to give them the necessary information so that they are not anxious and they are being well informed. As I mentioned just now, in order to be able to carry out their care for all these patients, they need to cooperate and work with other healthcare personnel, doctors, pharmacies, uh, physios, etc. So I think that in carrying out these activities, especially now, uh, patients sometimes, especially those who are in isolation, we are wearing the PPEs, we are not able to look at the facial expression. We do not know who this is. And especially for those who are young and those who are old, they find it very uh, uh, fearful because they do not know who is this. And looking at uh, somebody with this PPE can be very frightening for them. So as a nurse, I think we need to put in our caring, our uh, show that we are able to communicate to them what is happening so that they are uh, they are, they are not frightened. And I think it's not you know, being a nurse during this pandemic, it's just not providing care and completion of tasks, of nursing tasks, but also in communicating the care and the human touch to these patients. I think that is very important. Yeah, and also um, the tone and also the comforting words that we can give to the patients as well as to the family members is very important. I, other than that, uh, I'm also uh, thinking about uh, patients who are isolated and being away from family members. They might be uh, very lonely, very worried. So I think the uh, psychological support to these patients is equally as important uh, other than the normal routine care that we are giving to the patient. Other than that is also managing of time and resources in view of now um, uh, there is uh, a lot of cases and um, everyone is trying to do their best. So I think it's very important for the nurse to be able to prioritize and not only to prioritize, but also to carry out their duties with, um, with uh, how should I say, um, with commitment. And uh, I'm sure that this will be appreciated by uh, the patients as well as their family members. Uh, other than that, I think it's also very important that during this period for the nurses to be able to use the clinical reasoning in care uh, for these patients. As to as the frontliners, I think it's very important for them to be able to detect uh, changes in the patients and also to be able to uh, make sure that all these changes, they are able to address it and be able to prioritize the importance. And uh, I think, as I mentioned just now, being part of a team uh, is the only way that uh, we can all uh, win this uh, fight against uh, COVID-19. Okay, and uh, also, uh, I would also uh, mention here that uh, for nurses, as you can see now, they have shown a lot of commitment and uh, also uh, resilient in uh, fighting this COVID-19. It's not easy, I know, to take care of patients in this uh, situation where, as you can see, the ward, the patients keep on uh, having more and more patients and some uh, nurses, uh, because of shortage of staff, they also have to work longer hours. And I know it's, it's uh, very uh, hectic, and, uh, but I'm sure that with their dedication, uh, they'll be able to 
carry out their duties well. And as you can see, uh, one of the evidences is that uh, just two days after the announcement by the Ministry of Health, there is 3,000 nurses who are retired have actually registered to offer their help. Where can we actually find these people with this sort of commitment? So I'm actually very proud of them as nurses. So, you know, and, uh, as you can see, some of them said that, you know, um, they are retired with family members, but they are more concerned with helping their patients and reducing the burden of their colleagues. So I find this, you know, very touching and I'm so proud of being a nurse. So I hope that uh, with this, you know, uh, there are more people who will find uh, they are do they are you know, a place in nursing because I know that sometimes people always say why do you want to become a nurse? There are so many jobs and you have so better qualified to do other professional jobs. Why be a nurse? And this is what uh, nursing is about, you know, to see that uh, how committed we are and how caring, which is the essence of nursing, is being highlighted here so clearly during this pandemic. So, you know, uh, with that, I would like to end here and also uh, to all fellow nurses, my deepest admiration and respect and gratitude for all your effort and in this fight against this pandemic. Thank you. Okay, hand over to uh, Prof. Chin. Yes, thank you, Dr. Lim. That was such an amazing 10 minutes or so where, you know, you describe the importance of being a nurse. And, and if you would allow me to summarize before we go to the questions. Um, I know some of you have, have put some comments in the chat box asking to get to the point. Well, my response to those people Getting to the point is that it takes passion, dedication, and drive to do nursing. And that is part of what Dr. Lim is trying to tell all of you, that it's just not going to school, memorizing, you know, how the, the blood flows in your body, so on and so forth. It is about whether you want to dedicate your life to, treat, to help treat and manage people. And, and so as, as you can see from the raw emotions from Dr. Lim, it takes a lot. It takes a lot out of individuals to dedicate their lives to the profession of nursing, meaning that they are here to take care of others who can't take care of themselves. And the fact that the retired nurses have come in, come back, and it's not only Malaysia, it's worldwide, retired nurses coming back to the nursing profession to help others tells us that these, these women, these men are dedicated individuals who will give their utmost, 110%, 150% to help others. And, and so, Suigyok, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so anyway, uh, let's respond to some of the questions. So I will put together some questions, integrate them because we may get similar questions that come along. So if you don't hear your question being asked, it's not that it's not being asked directly, but it's integrated in a different um, number of questions. And if we don't get a chance to respond to all of them, we will post them on the website so you can go and read them all, okay? So the first question is from Jin Yang. Um, this student is studying diploma in occupational safety and health and would like to study nursing and the nursing degree program. So the student wants to know whether is it possible to enter directly using the diploma in occupational safety and health without credit transfer. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, actually for the entry requirement into the degree program, we have uh, a few uh, 
requirements uh, that you need to fulfill. Uh, if you have SPM uh, credits in uh, Bahasa, English, uh, Maths and Science, uh, you can actually uh, join the program and as well as STPM uh, with a uh, minimum CGPA of uh, 2.5. So I think if you need any further uh, inquiries, we, are, uh, we can, you can uh, write in and we can uh, give you the further details on this. Yes. But for credit transfer, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't think so that you can use the credit transfer from that program that you are currently uh, in. Okay. All right. Um, I hope uh, Jin Yang, you're okay with that. If not, you just, you know, write back in your chat box what, uh, what else you would want to hear from Dr. Lim. Okay, the next question is actually a, little, a very important question from Jayanti. How do you ensure that nurses are safe while they work? I, I would assume, Jayanti, you, uh, mean, you, you meant that uh, in a pandemic situation. So, Sweetie, can you please yeah. respond? I think uh, for most hospitals, they already have the SOP and uh, to handle the uh, PPE uh, for the hospitals. So I am sure that with the SOPs that is available in the hospital, uh, they will, the hospital will ensure that uh, the, the nurses are uh, protected and have adequate uh, facilities and as well as equipment to ensure that they are safe in their practice. Yes. Um, so to add to that, um, so, so yeah, what you're saying is um, every hospital has their own yes. SOPs. Yes. Okay. yes. So it may differ from hospital to hospital. Okay. All right. And, and uh, from Jin Yang, a follow-up question is, um, how do you maintain the quality of a nurse? Okay, how do you maintain uh, the quality of a nurse? All right, uh, I think in the hospital, uh, sorry, in the uh, training colleges as well as the universities or institutions that's offering uh, the nursing program, we have our, our curriculum is actually based on the guideline given by the nursing board. So uh, it is of quality. And uh, for the hospitals, once they are graduated, once they are graduated, uh, we are actually required to uh, have our con our continuous nursing education. Uh, there is a certain hours that we need to fulfill in order to renew our annual practicing certificate. So uh, that is how we ensure that there is a continuous uh, education and quality of the nurses. And I think most uh, hospitals as well, they also have their own in-house uh, training as well, and also their own processes to ensure that their nurses is current and uh, with the practices that is required. So uh, I think uh, that is um, how they maintain the quality of the uh, nurses. Okay, so so basically, just recap a little bit. So what you're saying is, after they get their degree, uh, throughout periodically throughout the year or throughout the years, they will be asked to to basically uh, upgrade themselves hmm. and and attend workshops to All right. make things better. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And there's a question. Uh, I'm trying to integrate some of these questions. Um, some of the students here are saying that. Um, in the first semester, it's not easy being a nurse, hmm. learning, <laughs> learning how, you know, how the body works and all that stuff. But at the same time, they also have to be in the wards. They actually get a chance to apply what they've learned in the wards. And so how do you address something like that? Okay. Uh, I think this is very uh, usual, very common for those who have just started their nursing. Uh, usually, for the first semester or first year, we actually expose the students to the basic nursing care, uh, 
uh, you know, those uh, like taking temperature, how to ensure uh, cleanliness of the patient, <coughs> turning the patient, making beds, and you know, those sort of procedures. But it's important because those are actually the basic uh, requirement that you need in order for you to take care of a patient. Yeah? And you will find that as you move on to the next semester or the next year, you find that all this, which we call as foundations in nursing, will help you to function uh, and understand better when you take care of the patients. Yeah, uh, don't worry. In the first year, it's all you, you'll find that uh, you know you'll find that it's a bit challenging. But don't worry. As you move on, you will feel that it's very, uh, it's very uh, how do I say? It is necessary, and it will, it will. You find that it gets easier as you move on. Yeah. So not to worry. Yeah. So, so just to sum up a little bit of what uh, Suya yeah. was saying, yes. the first first year is essentially a building block year where you lay yeah. the brick for your foundation, yeah. so that for your future years, if you go to the wards and a few things you may not be able to handle, but you have the training and the basics that you need. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to integrate some questions now. Mm. Um, some of the questions that have been asked is. Um, so the first year you have all these basic foundations. So towards the the later years and also after graduation, can you suggest um, of certain specialities because you've gone through certain specialities mm. once you've got your nursing degree. Yeah. So can you suggest to the students what areas, yeah. I mean, yours was in critical care. So what areas that, are, that may be important and relevant right now during the pandemic? Okay, I think that, um, Deciding on which area uh, you would like to choose as your area of speciality, it actually depends on the individual himself. As for me, as I move on in my uh, training, my uh, three years of training, I somehow, when I, when I was doing my uh, clinical posting, I somehow find that I have a niche or I, I seem to like in the area of critical care. So I am sure that for you, as you move on in your training, you will also be able to identify areas that you somehow uh, feel passionate about and would like to specialize in that area. So I think this is very uh, individual. Yeah, it depends on the person. Yeah? It's not for me to, to say that, you know, you should go to this uh, uh, critical care. Not everybody likes critical care. Yeah? Uh, there are people who actually like gerontology, care of the elderly. So it, it, is, it, is, it is, uh, depends on the person. Yes. Mm -hmm. so can, you, can you suggest um, what other specialities um, that is available right now, especially okay. during the, the, in relationship to the pandemic? Oh, okay. Uh, you can specialize in infection control. Infection control. Yeah. And what does that entail? You can tell them. You a can bit. actually uh, become a infection control nurse. You can become an infection control nurse. So uh, we have a, a speciality in this area. So uh, nurses can uh, the uh, nurses who they, they who specialize in this area, they will actually uh, become uh, they will work uh, with uh, the risk management uh, unit where they will look into infection control in the hospitals and they will uh, monitor uh, like um, those uh, throat swabs and uh, look into um, uh, monitoring of any infections, wound infection. Uh, so they will monitor all this. So they are the one who will work in the uh, uh, risk management or infection control unit in the hospitals. So this is important actually to monitor the uh, the rate of uh, infection in the hospital. Yeah. So what about um, intensive care units? Uh, in, in intensive care unit now we actually have uh, intensive care unit. We can actually separate them into uh, like I said just now unit. They can also work into uh, critical care. 
they can also go into uh, cardiac care. So there is actually uh, a few areas. Uh, some of them also specialize in neurology. So they will work in the area of specialty of uh, uh, neuro cases, neurology cases. So there are a few areas that they can specialize in intensive, but in a specific uh, areas. Okay, Ms. Tab, you had mentioned, um, as, as uh, we touched on briefly, that um, this COVID-19 actually attacks the lungs. Mm -hmm. So the, the uh, ventilators, the inability of the patients to communicate with, with uh, nurses because they can't speak, right, once they're on mm -hmm. the ventilator. Mm -hmm. So the nurse's job is very, very difficult in the sense that mm -hmm you are supposed to be the go between the liaison between the patient and the family so and some of the questions asked is how do you handle the psychological burden because it takes a lot mm. out of the nurses right. uh, how, how do you think how do you think uh, you would do that oh okay um yes in that aspect it does actually put in a lot of stress for the nurses uh, to take care of this sort of uh, patients. But uh, I think if you are, you are really uh, motivated uh, and you are dedicated to the care of patient, you'll be able to uh, take the stress. And especially so if you are in the area of intensive care, it will, if you, that is your, you will be exposed to this sort of situation uh, day in and day out. So uh, you will be able to you know, need to debrief yourself and uh, sometimes a peers plays a very important uh, role you know uh, to debrief and at times it can uh, get really very stressful and the workload is really heavy but I think with the support of uh, colleagues and uh, sharing uh, this uh, stress and debriefing and talking about it, yeah, uh, it does help to uh, lighten uh, the stress as you move along. But, uh, and also, as you see patients recover, it does give you a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, satisfaction and that actually, in a way, also helps uh, to de-stress yourself that it's worth whatever that you have done uh, in the improvement of the patient. Okay, so I, I think you, so you you stressed on something very, very important, which is, you know, you're not in this alone. Mm. Just like students, when they study for exams, they don't have to study alone. You study with your, your group of friends. Whereas, like you say, you have your peers, you have your, your fellow nurses, and you have your head or matron nurses where you can debrief or just vent and, and talk about you know, the, the, the patients in, in a confidential way, of course, on how you manage your patients. Because it's, it's very hard if you, if you see somebody pass away. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a very yeah. heavy burden. Mm -hmm. So the psychological stress is there. Mm -hmm. um, do nurses actually need to see psychologists or counselors? Uh, actually, um, it Usually, if uh, we are able to debrief, we're able to uh, confide in, in our team uh, members or our superiors, uh, it is very uh, unlikely that we need to come to that extent, I would say. Uh, I think as a team, if you have a good team, uh, the team members will actually be able to support each other and be able to recognize when uh, another team member is uh, very stressed, you know, and I think they, they, they do share uh, their, their uh, whatever stress or whatever you know, things that is their mind that is causing a lot of anxiety to them. And I think that helps a lot. And usually uh, that is, I think, uh, the main uh, thing that can help uh, nurses working in this sort of area. Okay, so the <laughs> acknowledgement, I would say, the acknowledgement as well of the mm. yes. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. The, um, so uh, just just to recap a little bit, um, also, also I have to bring back what students are currently undergoing in 
in uh, the universities right now in or any program is the students are taught to work as a team. The students are taught to, you know, seek help when necessary. And, and those, that foundation that you mentioned earlier of teamwork mm -hmm. and, you know, from year one to year two, year three or four, that kind of teamwork and camaraderie will be tested in actual, the nursing profession itself, like right now, right? And you lean on each other and you help each other. And, and so um, one of the things that um, is very important uh, before I go on, uh, this is, this is uh, something that is directly to you, Sweet mm -hmm. Girl. It's uh, from Jun Fui Pang, your first batch of nursing students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she just would like to give you a hug and say thank you for sharing. Okay, okay. Now um, let's go back really quickly uh, from Prema, and Prema and a lot of other students have asked, "What is the best advice to give nurses who are currently in the front lines right now?" I mean, you mentioned a lot about uh, you, you know the, the passion, the drive, the commitment. But what is the best and the, the strongest advice you have based on your experience? <clears throat> I think uh, I think my advice is that in during this period, I think it's very important for nurses to uh, be focused on what is their main role as a nurse. And I think the main role as a nurse or the essence of nursing, as we always say, is caring. So I think if we hold on to this essence, which is to be caring in our nursing practice, I think that will actually uh, allow us to do the best. Um. Mm. The the uh, the compassion and the empathy yeah. Yeah. comes along. Yeah. Um, all right, and um, so the going back to the uh, questions of um, after graduation, you attend workshops, you get post certified in different areas. Um, uh, what are the available career choices for nurses? Number one, with a very basic nursing degree. And number two, with uh, post basic experience, can you talk talk to the students at these two different levels? <clears throat> For those who are working, uh, those with basic degree, they can actually uh, work in the hospitals. Uh, hospitals, uh, they can actually uh, they can be registered nurses. Uh, they can either choose to uh, become clinical instructors if they want to so uh, in the hospital you can uh, either work in the clinical practice itself or you can actually become uh, educators uh, to guide other students uh, or new nurses who join the uh, nursing team uh, you can actually also become uh, preceptors those who are uh, uh, nurses who actually will uh, be together with uh, new nurses who join the team so that uh, they have someone to depend on and that will give them uh, 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 a sense of somebody to lean on so that uh, they are not frightened when they first join the nursing uh, profession. So um, that is for the uh, diploma uh, nurses. And for those who are on the degree uh, level, um, they can actually choose to uh, work in the hospital or they can actually uh, work in the uh, university itself or they can actually choose to uh, move on to become uh, researchers. Uh, they can also work in the industry if they want to. Uh, they have a lot of uh, opportunities like in the, the uh, companies, uh, medical companies where they can actually uh, deal with medical equipment uh, or there are also uh, nurses who can actually move on to become educators uh, to teach patients 
and they can also go to home visits. Uh, they will go to patients' home to look after the patient or also to uh, give uh, advice to the patients and also to provide the services uh, at home. So I think there is a lot of uh, areas that they can uh, uh, opportunities for them to actually uh, provide the services. Hmm. Um, can you share a little bit about, uh, this is along the same question, mm. uh, can you share a little bit about, you know, why you decided to get your master's in education and your PhD as well? Because this is not the regular pathway for nurses in Malaysia, right? Mm. Okay, I, I actually pursued my master's because um, I find that uh, being uh, a nurse, there should not be uh, a stop in your learning. Uh, we should always continue to upgrade ourselves and uh, one of the ways is actually to uh, do your masters and uh, I think in this way you can actually uh, learn to uh, be, have a better broaden our perspective in, in nursing and also so that when we provide our services we are able to uh, be much more uh, efficient and also uh, we can actually have a higher level of thinking and also be able to help other nurses to uh, improve themselves as well and also to uh, uh, and also to um, in, uh, improve themselves in the sense that they can actually um, give better services to the community and I actually I've also after I did my master's I actually decided to move on to the PhD because I thought that um, having a PhD can actually help to improve the uh, nursing services as well as the level of nursing in the uh, country so I thought that that is uh, that is good for me to move on and pursue uh, the highest that I can in the education level. Okay, the one of the interesting things is uh, that we always hear is uh, with with nurses, you may get a chance to be entrepreneurial, mm. meaning um, you set up your own nursing service. Mm. Um, I think. Uh, there are a few in Malaysia, right? Um, and what is your suggestion for uh, those who, who may want to be entrepreneurial? Uh, well, yes, there are nurses who actually uh, ventured into this, uh, this route. Uh, they, they actually uh, open up their own uh, nursing homes. Uh, there are also nurses who actually uh, do services uh, such as uh, nursing services where they will do home visits and do and provide uh, uh, nursing uh, services such as uh, procedure like uh, wound care and also some go into uh, diabetic care where they can actually uh, visit these patients and give them advice and also how to use uh, equipments related to their condition. Uh, there are also uh, nurses who actually uh, ventured into um, uh, uh, they have their own uh, private nursing care where they actually help to organize uh, uh, nurses, a uh, pool of nurses that can actually provide care to uh, families who need uh, private nurses and uh, they will organize and uh, these services to uh, the patients. So uh, in that sense, uh, this actually uh, is uh, part of being entrepreneur uh, in a sense. Yeah, so, so this 20th, 21st century nursing is very different from when you first started, isn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, we do not have this uh, entrepreneurship uh, in nursing during uh, the yeah. Early yeah, but now uh, I think the nurses are becoming more confident and uh, <laughs> are being more uh, adventurous. And uh, with the, I think with the skills that they have and the confidence, they are able to venture out from 
the hospital settings and uh, be independent on their own. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, actually, on that note, I would like to to give you a shout out from your ex student, Nor Iswani Abdul Marnaf. She was um, she was your student back in two thousand and two to two thousand and five. She's now very proud to be an oncology nurse, and she just wants to say thank you to you for helping out. Um, I just want to add something from somebody called Wong, and um, with regards to the question on the psychological burden, uh, Wong did say that um, in certain settings, they have safety doctors to look into staff psychological issues, you know, socially we, you know, they monitor the staff. Yeah. So is this, um, is this uh, the norm now? Because before, probably not, right? Mm. I think uh, before we, we, it's not really a norm, but I think now uh, with this support, I think it's good. Uh, at least there is uh, a professional uh, source that they can actually go to if they are unable to handle uh, the stress and they need some professional help, I think it's very good of the hospital to provide this sort of services. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, Mr. or Ms. Wong also have mentioned that you were, you, were, you were very accurate in your assessment of, you know, PPEs, you know, personal protective equipment, and everybody has to follow MOH's uh, guidelines and everything. So... So the, the nursing profession, you know, let's just go back a little bit. Um, uh, let's go back to the last pandemic. Of course, none of us were born at, at that point. It's 1918. That's where the initial flu pandemic happened. So can you compare and contrast between what happened in 1918 versus 2020? It's all, it's 102 years later. But do you see the same fundamentals being employed in this particular case? I think in this aspect of uh, this uh, 2020 with this pandemic, I think uh, things are more organized. Yeah, I think and uh, uh, the healthcare, I think is uh, really working together as a team and contributing to uh, ensure that uh, this pandemic is uh, being uh, addressed and uh, and win this fight against uh, this COVID-19. I think it's extremely good in the way that I, I think of it, yes. Mm. Yeah, so um, I, I, I think what, you, what we're seeing now, once again, we always have to go back to the fundamentals. Mm. So like what you said, in 1918 and 2020, the fundamentals are the same. Mm. You know, what do nurses do? The same thing. You treat them, you care for them, you are basically the one who spends the most time with them. Not really the doctors, right? Not really the biomedical scientists or the dietitians or the medical biotechnologists. Nurses are the ones who actually take care of the patients the most, right? Yes. yes. And, and the patients rely on you guys to do, to do their communications for them. And so the role, I, I personally, after listening to you, I personally think, you know, nurses are my heroes at, at, at this stage in, in the front lines during the pandemic, because it's, uh, it's something that you don't see every day to have retired nurses come back mm -hmm. because the passion is there. And, and, and so what you learn in, in the universities and what you have inside comes together to make who you are. You know, like you decided to do your PhD. It's not easy to do a PhD <laughs> in nursing, is it? No, it's not. It's very challenging. It's very challenging. And so, you, you know, the, the difference between an education or an academic nurse versus a clinical nurse, I think um, students really are not aware of it. So can you tell a little bit about that? Okay. I think for those who are in academician, Mainly what they do is they are trying to uh, help to uh, uh, train nurses and to provide them the, the knowledge as well as the skills in order 
for the nurses to uh, work effectively. As compared to those who are in the clinical, they are the one who is really in contact with the patient himself. So uh, maybe they are the one who are seeing the patient day by day. And uh, I think that, uh, but no matter what, uh, we are all, both sides are nurses. Yeah, so we are contributing uh, in, uh, in the, so it's the same objective, but in a different way. Yeah. So uh, when, uh, we're almost close to the end, I just want to, to read a comment from Fui Pang, one of your um, graduates as well. Um, she says that she's uh, practicing in Singapore right now, and she's always proud to be a nurse. Um, and um, she basically says that uh, this pandemic has made nurses stronger because of their important role in the healthcare services, mm -hmm. right? And um, you guys are the frontliners, and I really, you know, you're very grateful to have nurses in, in this current state. I wouldn't know where we would be without you guys. So for all the, all the students who are, who are out there who are thinking of coming into the nursing profession, I'm sure Dr. Lim Sui Gyok has stated all the prime reasons and the comments given by some of the students and probably practitioners have helped tremendously as well. Because nursing is, as, as you uh, so nicely pointed out, it is a profession of passion, right? It's something that is within that we cannot teach. So exactly like what you stated as well, it's up to you to decide what you want to do in what particular area or whatever branch of nursing you want. And you have specifically chosen critical care, right? And other students do not have to follow you. They can do what their passion is right now. And in this particular pandemic, I, I personally think, I, I want to hear your thoughts as well. You, you know, the, the nursing profession has been elevated in Malaysia. And that's number one. What is your, your opinion on that? And number two, where do we go from here now that the nursing profession is on the forefront? I think, uh, in my opinion, the nursing profession actually uh, is uh, getting better as uh, go along. And uh, nursing has not only advanced to the PhD, but in other countries, they have actually got, uh, moved on to having uh, nurse practitioners and uh, where nurse practitioners are able to have their own uh, clinic, they can see patients, they can also prescribe medications, uh, a limited uh, uh, list of medications, but they have more authority and more autonomy uh, in their job description. So I think uh, with that, I think we can see that nursing profession is uh, getting better and advancing. Uh, so I hope that for Malaysia as well, we will also uh, move on in that direction. Okay. All right. Uh, one, one last comment. It's actually not a question. It's a comment from Mr. or Ms. Wong. Um, so she, I think she, he or she's added to what you just commented. Uh, nurses, we improve in knowledge and do evidence-based learning, which is what COVID-19, uh, the pandemic is doing right now. Uh, in this era, it is very different and it is very novel. So going back to pandemic in 1918 versus pandemic in 2020, we have the technology now. We can assess, we can test, we have the nutrition to make them heal faster, we have the biomedical science to test them faster, and, and of course we have the medical biotechnology to come up with um, vaccinations and the actual test kit itself. So, so trying to sum, summarize everything, health sciences plays a huge role in, in this COVID-19 pandemic that I think is not truly appreciated and based on the comments that we've heard from the chats and from what was discussed on Friday from uh, 
Professor Anthony Rhodes and from uh, Dr. Lindsay Gyok. Uh, it just highlights the importance of health sciences in this healthcare system currently during the pandemic. So I hope uh, we're going to end this very quickly. Um, I hope that everybody is satisfied with the responses. If not, please continue to write in that chat and we will address your questions on the, on the web. And so before we go, we would like to first, you know, thank uh, Dr. Lim for giving an, an impassioned talk on, on her profession of choice. And also we would like all of you, if you have the time to join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. for Professor Winnie Cheese to talk on the role of di dietitians and nutritionists during the pandemic. And also if you have time next Monday, you can join me in discussing why medical biotechnology is, is important during the pandemic. Okay, so if there are no other comments, any last minute comments, Dr. Lim? Uh, no, uh, I'd just like to say to all nurses, uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, be safe, stay home, and hope to see you tomorrow. All right, thank you audience, we're out.